What is up, everybody? How you doing? I hope you your Monday went well. I hope your eclipse viewing was was clear and uncluttered. <laughs> Jay Dam, clouds ruin the eclipse, but watched on NASA and other areas. Yeah, we we watched it on the news, but. We stayed right here at our house in Brewerton and overlooking the watch the sky over the uh, the river. And you could see a little bit. We had the special glasses and and I see some people on Facebook made tinfoil hats. I feel bad that Courtney and I didn't make a tinfoil hat for ourselves. Um, just in case anything from outer space wanted to try and, you know, contact us in any way. Uh but when we did go to com total, total totality, uh, you could see it even through the cloud cover we had here at our house. Um, it got dark, not as dark as I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought it was going to be dark like night. Um, you could see to the east when we looked down the river, headed towards the lake, that it looked like it was regular daytime that way. Um, to the south. And to the east, it certainly was darker. Um, west, to the west, to the south and the west. The east, it was light. The south and the west, it was dark. <clears throat> um, what would I do without a wife to tell me <laughs> when I make a mistake? You're welcome. Thank you, dear. Um, that was interesting. But but like I say, even though the thin cloud cover, when it when it came fully like that, you could see even through the clouds, you could see the ring um, around it. It was pretty neat. I, I it would have been cooler to see it, you know, in a clear sky. And it's funny because so I had a I had a drift boat trip on the Salmon River this morning, and and we fished in beautiful, clear, sunny skies right from right from the start of the day from sunrise all the way through till oh about one o'clock when we were getting off the river um then it then it got cloudy and there were some people up along the river I, we didn't know what to expect today if there was going to be a ton of people fishing or not um but there wasn't but we did see quite a few people, you know, out looking around, walking around the river. And you could tell, I mean, you see people walking up and down the river in spots with no fishing gear. <laughs> you know that they're not there to fish. Um, there were people in the parking lots and stuff. Um, you know, some of the public access parking lots up there. I didn't see it. all the people that they said, but I didn't go out driving around either today. So I don't know what it was like. I'd be curious to hear stories. And I know a lot of places had big eclipse viewing parties and I hope they all went well and everyone's awesome. Um, but that was interesting and, and may possibly, you know, will be the only one that we see in our lifetime here. You could travel and go see other eclipses, but um, pretty interesting. It was it was it was pretty interesting. I don't know that I would have traveled extreme distances to go see this today, um, but sitting with my wife in my in my backyard, it was absolutely cool. Uh, Michael Hoover, hello, Don Terry. Don Terry's doing a perch fry. Everybody, if you want to go over and grab some perch from him. He didn't say that, but I'm offering because, and he would love it. So, Aaron Lussier, Tammy Hoover, Thad Lance, Mark Webb, <clears throat> Chris Bryant, probably because probably you could see so much sky. I was in a place where you could not see much sky around you, and it got pitch black where I was in Rochester. Oh, that's pretty cool. Eric Wisniewski, what's up, Wiz? <clears throat> And Chris said there was no sun or eclipse visible from where I was, too cloudy, and that was in Rochester. Jim Hagler, Ray Kabaki, we had a lot of darkness here, lower South Bay. I heard I heard fireworks going out there. Keith Horns, 
So my buddy Keith sent me a text message earlier today, uh, not too long ago, and said, yeah, the, the, the viewing of the eclipse was awesome where he was. And I should have known better. The only thing, the only thing that would have been better about this eclipse is, is if it would have been on April 1st. And I should have known better than to open this, this video from my buddy. And, <laughs> and I can't exactly, because this is a PG rated show, tell you what it was, but there was a light in the background. And then there was a part of a man's anatomy that went and covered the light um, and kept moving. And as soon as I opened it up, <laughs> I was like, oh, God. I can't undo seeing that one right there. So thanks, buddy. <laughs> oh, William Gilbert. Uh, Brian says, I was on the road before and after, and there was less traffic than a normal Monday. Um, Eric Wisniewski says, perch were on fire today. Don Terry, clouds didn't allow me to focus on it with the big lens. It was cool at my place on the lake during totality. Ah, uh, that's true. Uh, Don Terry is our resident professional photographer, and um, I'm sure that uh, that you've got the best pictures you could. Yeah, laugh it up, Keith. <laughs> laugh it up, buddy. Paul Messina, happy Monday. Paul and I went and fished Oswego yesterday. Um, morning, we our normal Paul and I usually fish together on Monday mornings, um, weekly. A man like that with such a busy schedule doesn't get a ton of time to fish as he would like, but we couldn't do it today because I was I was guiding, and so I I saw him the other night. We went down for dinner on Friday, uh, yeah, Friday night with some friends, and. I said, hey, let's sneak out Sunday morning. So we went up to Oswego and cast it off the wall uh, for the morning, and we ended up with a couple bass. Um, I had one small spawned out hen female, and he caught a big walleye um, in the river. So it's funny. I've I've fished I fished Oswego now four times this spring, twice in the river, and twice in my boat in my big boat uh, trolling. And typically, Oswego is one of those spots that, that, especially out in the harbor in the spring, it's brown trout central. You know, now with this weird winter, I'll tell you that, in my humble opinion, the river and the harbor are full of smallmouth, big pre spawn smallmouth. And it's not supposed to be full of them right now, it's supposed to be full of browns. Typically, this would be the start of the real heavy brown trout fishing season. Um, the charters are starting to get in and get out and the, the small boats. Now, this year, it's been different. You've been able to get out there really anytime all winter if you could launch. And those browns have been on shore all winter. Um I'm not sure where they went right now. Now, I haven't went out searching, searching. The two times I went up there trolling with my boat, it was big, heavy, um, well, north winds. North One day was north-northwest, and one day was north-northeast. So I couldn't go out and really look and, and cover a lot of water when I was trolling. But in normal years, you wouldn't have to. You would stay in the harbor, um, and you could do your whole trip in the harbor and, and typically have plenty of action, plenty of action. I assume with the weird winter we had that it really, um, A, it brought those smallmouth in pre-spawn mode earlier and they've come in because the water was still really very cold. I mean, it was 38 to 40.5 up there, um, not this past weekend, the weekend before that. So we're only talking eight or nine days ago. Um, and since then, we haven't had any amount of warm weather that would drastically change that um so uh, you know we'll see the the search will continue i'll be back out there um over the weekend because i love to brown trout fish all the years i chartered and when i had my charter boat and when i worked on other charter boats um salmon season's great you know it's fun to go chase big lakers all summer 
But for me, the, the, the real fun, the most fun thing I always did and I looked forward to on the, on the lake season was spring browns. Um, light tackle, you're near shore. The action can be fast and furious when you find them. And so I'm still, I still need to, to, to get that fix for myself. Um, and I really want to get enough footage to do a nice – how to video because a lot of guys don't don't spring troll on the lake and you don't have to have a whole lot of special gear you flatline troll um you could do it as simply as if you have a rod holder on your boat with an inline planer board and a it doesn't even have to be a trolling rod i mean when i was young you would just use a spinning rod you would cast the lure out as far as you thought you needed to close the bail on the spinning reel and start trolling so we can have specialized gear, but you don't need it to go enjoy it. Um, and I do, I am, I am going to do a, a spring trolling video that really lays things out in detail for people to hopefully get them interested in it. Lake Ontario and the Great Lakes can be intimidating. They don't have to be. Um, they can be very specialized. They don't necessarily have to be. And it's much easier to break into the trolling game on the Great Lakes in the spring and fall when you are near shore and you don't have to worry about downriggers and all the other accoutrements that come along with with um, with trolling. And honestly, if you're a walleye guy and you're a troller at all and you have you know a box of stick baits that you like to troll for walleyes with, Brown trout will eat them too. You don't have to go out and buy special stick baits and spoons and blah, blah, blah. You can, but you don't have to. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Steve Smith caught a ton of browns out of Oswego today. I saw, Steve, I actually saw your post on Facebook. Um, when I got home today. Um, so good. I'm glad to see that they're there. Um, that's very encouraging. So uh, let's see. Spring steelhead. I never do this. I, I honestly never do this. I I have, I had a trip today. I have a trip with the same people tomorrow. Um, the water on the Salmon River, if we don't get any rain, Spring steelhead fishing is going to go quick. Um, and quite honestly, so I in the, I plug fish, okay? And, and I don't know if everybody really truly – I've got a, a bunch of videos out there of, of plug fishing from the drift boat up there. It's trolling. It's back trolling with lures. And today we were – we were five for six. We landed five of the six, which six bites during dropback season isn't a banner day by any means. Um, but that water is low and clear, and we had bright, high, sunny skies all day, which, which are about the worst you could have in that world. Um, but we still managed our bites, and my guys did a great job. Brett and Scott did a great job today being on those rods right away and doing everything we had to do and getting everything else cleared out of the way. And it really worked great. Part of the reason I'm talking about this is this week and next week, I do have a couple days available if somebody wants to go um, and somebody wants to, to book a trip with me. I, I don't fish weekends. Don't ask me because I'm not doing it. And for me, the weekend starts on Friday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no. I fish Monday through Thursday. That's all. Um, you know, we can we can do the Salmon River. We can take the drift boat and do uh, the Oswego River as well, the lower end, which I do love that fishing down there as well. But for the Salmon River, if someone's looking for a trip and they want to get out, and this is, I'm saying it now, today, like if you want to go Wednesday, you, you let me know today. Um, so I'll, I would do Wednesday, Thursday of this week and Monday through Thursday of next week. If anybody's interested, get a hold of me privately, um, Facebook or Instagram. You can private message me if you don't have my number. Um, 
You can go to the Walleye Fest website and you can email me because I'm the one that gets it. Um, so if if anybody, and again, you guys have never heard me say anything about booking a trip, but we had so many steelhead in the hatchery this year. There's still steelhead up in the up in this hatchery system, not nearly as many. They're dropping back. And with this lower water, they're going to drop back fast. So anything after next week, it's hard to say unless we get rain. But right now, we got enough water to last us another week to two weeks. So if someone's interested, let me know. Um, and we can set up a trip. It's for two people. Uh, you know, we'll get into all that if you if you're interested. But um, get a hold of me, and we'll go we'll go steelhead fishing. Today, like I say, today was great. And in the guys, I've been with these guys for multiple years before. I'm I'm running a second boat today and tomorrow for my buddy Captain Todd Sheltra. Um, so, ah, Kevin Stone, how you doing? What's up, Vinny? Nice to see you join us. Um, now, I didn't see much in the way of activity today. Matter of fact, I don't think I saw anybody hooked up all day. There wasn't many bank guys, a few. Um, Bob Bender, how you doing? Um, there was a few other drift boats, um, drift boat captains out there with clients. I wasn't in an area where I was watching guys cast. And once we came into a pool, we put the lures out and I start rowing and and down we go down through the pool. And once you get to the end, you pick them up and you keep right on going. So, but I didn't see anybody catching any fish casting today. Not to say that you won't, the, the guys, and you can, and you could be casting about anything what you wanted right now. You could be, uh, whether it's, whether it's um, spinners, like, like, like blue fox, bigger panther martins, CP swings, um, spinner fishing this time of year for for dropbacks can be a lot of fun. In the in the the bites are just vicious; <clears throat> they don't mess around. Those dropbacks, everything we had today, all five fish we landed were all spawned out females. Um, I did see a couple fish still actively spawning on beds. And even if that fish has come out of the hatchery and has been uh, force spawned, they don't realize it. Um, they go into the hatchery and they come they come out of the tank, and you give them you give them one squeeze down the belly, and you get as much eggs you know as as many eggs out as you can in a squeeze or two, and that's it. And they go in the tube and they go back out. So they go out into a holding tank afterwards. And they sit there and recuperate. I assume that that's traumatic. But not only that, they didn't get that chance to spawn, which is what biologically their bodies are telling them. And so they still go look for gravel, even if they may not have any or, or a, you know, a smaller percentage of their total egg weight left. So they still go to gravel. We still run our lures down through the gravel spawning areas looking for them, you know. Um, everything this time of year is really catch and release, to be honest with you. The, the, the legal limit is one per person, but the fish today, they're beat up. They're, they're long and skinny, and most of them that have been in the hatchery have fungus growing on them where they've what right <laughs> – where they have wiped or rubbed the protective coating off their fins or body um, from rubbing against that concrete. And they get that white um, fungus that grows on them, just like a salmon does in the fall, except steelhead don't die after they spawn. A steelhead is just a rainbow trout that lives in the lake and makes a spawning run to another body of water, in this case, the Salmon River, to spawn. That's the only thing that's different about a steelhead from a rainbow trout that lives in the same environment year round. Um, there's some other fine details, but that's the nuts and bolts of it. And trout, all trout can spawn multiple times in their life. So it's a renewable resource. So, but the reason I say it's pretty much catch and release this time of year is because you, when you see them, 
like I say, they're long and skinny and, and they have used a lot of those fish have been in the river system since last. Oh, some of them as early as, you know, end of September uh, into October, they come in when all the Kings and the salmon are in there and they're eating eggs like crazy. They're eating eggs. Um, from then until now, they've lived mainly off their fat reserves. There are some aquatic insects. Actually, today we had an amazing stonefly hatch coming off all, all, well, the small ones came off this morning right after first light. But by noontime from 10 to 12, when that sun was really warm on the, on the water, and I'm talking big stoneflies. All the way up to, I'll bet you, I'll bet you I saw some today that were size six. The ones first thing this morning were probably 18s, 16s, and 18s. Um, so there are there's a pretty prolific bug hatch um, of multiple species because we get some caddis also in the Salmon River. So those fish have some food naturally in there, but not enough to sustain that big body. I mean, a 10 plus pound steelhead. I can't imagine how many bugs it would have to eat per day to sustain itself. So by this time of year, they've really run themselves down. Now, they still put up a, an excellent fight. Um, it doesn't last nearly as long as a fall steelhead, but the strikes are vicious. I mean, today those rods were just smashing over. It was not – sometimes in some years you get that that drop back bite like this. You'll see the rod go over and goes, won't. Well, like this. Today it was, except for the first one, the first bite of the day was what we would call a line runner. The bow of the boat's here, my lure is here, and there's about 35 feet of difference. Um, 35 feet, you put that lure out. That fish was between the boat and the and the lure. And we got into this one area, and all of a sudden you just saw the rod go like this. And, and it and it stayed down. As soon as the fish came up, we're clearing rods. And I, and I always have one eye. I'm watching my client. I listen. I keep the clickers on the reel. So I'm listening for the clicker to hear what's going on because I can tell whether they're reeling line or if there's line coming off the drag. And I'm watching. All of a sudden, I look down river and I can see the fish and I see like a bulge of water around it. And I'm like, Either it's massive or something's wrong. And I didn't know what yet, but as soon as I heard it and I looked at him and he's he's all the way into the rod and that big eight-foot JT um, ascendant trolling rod, which I absolutely love for plug fishing because that's, that, that fast tip is so fantastic and it really keeps that, that lure working well. Um, he had it maxed right out. He's like... I can't move this fish. Well, it's what we call a line runner. So that fish turned when it saw the boat and went away from us to get out of town. And it went right down the line and had that jointed Rapala stuck from its belly right here. It's pretty rare to foul hook a fish when you're plug fishing. And um, it's actually very rare. And this was one of those instances. We let everything go anyway. So it doesn't matter. You bring it in, you unhook it, you let it go. Um, but like I say, it was it was odd in in all the years of doing it, you you know there's something different going on. Um, but it was it was it was a it was a wonderful day. It was a lot of fun. It was a beautiful spring day. My lord, it was beautiful out there today. Now, most of the river isn't green yet. You'll see you'll see the banks start getting green here pretty quick. The buds seem to be a little retarded from from down here where I live in Brewerton, things are the buds are really, really like we've got we've got some flowers that are starting to bloom. The trees are ready, you know, especially if we have a couple warm days here with some good warm sun. These trees are ready to uh, ready to bust, you know. And you drive around the countryside, and all the underbrush is green already, you know. And if you're also a spring turkey hunter like me, you always gauge what opening day is going to be like by this time of year, you know, if it starts getting too green, like I don't like to turkey hunt 
real late into May because it the foliage is full and and it makes it a much more difficult. Your your calls don't travel nearly as far. Um, but right now, if you were going to hunt up north, if opening day was tomorrow, it's it's still pretty brown and and not green yet. But you're starting to get there. Um, and the Salmon River is beautiful, quite honestly. And if you've never been on a drift boat trip and, and covered today, we fished from Altmar um, all the way down to the compactor at 2A. So we did two sections. Uh, it's Altmar to Pineville, Pineville to the compactor, and then the compactor to the ballpark, and then the ballpark to the estuary. So we did the we did half the river, a little more than half the river today, eight nine miles, um, and some of those places like you get down in the middle around the sportsman's pool, and or above the sportsman's pool right there, like below the ace, below Trout Brook, and it opens up and it's so quiet and there wasn't very many people around today, and and my one customer today, Brett, this was his first time up with us, and. It's funny. He said to me, he goes, you know, I've always heard about um, the Salmon River in a negative way, you know, in the, in the, how it is in the fall and, and with all the salmon fishermen and, and um, he goes, this isn't that at all. Believe me, it can be, it can be elbow to elbow September and October. And it usually is. And that's what happens when you get, you know, half a million salmon coming back to the river. Everybody wants to catch one. And it's like a carnival comes to town in September and October. And then it transitions. And then you have your, your trout fishermen and your steelhead fishermen that start showing up in November and then through the winter and into the spring. But he said multiple times, he goes, you know, we saw ospreys today. We saw, we didn't see an eagle. We did see two ospreys. Um, multiple times he said to me, it's beautiful here. It's quiet. It's peaceful. And he's right. It's a beautiful river to fish. We have such a jewel. There's not any, you know, if you're a fisherman, you know about the Salmon River. Whether you fish it or not, you know about it if you live anywhere on the East Coast. Um, and and it made me feel good that I was able to show him something that was really special today. And 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 you could see it left a mark. You know, he he's, he's a pretty well-seasoned, well-traveled angler. Um, but what we have is a gem here. It's world class for a reason. So I'm 27 minutes in, and all I'm talking about is spring steelhead fishing. So I will, I will, I will put a pin in it. Let's talk about walleye fest. Huh, so I have a poll up right now, and it's the poll is, are you participating in any Walleye Fest optional leaderboards? So we all know, let's talk, let's start talking Walleye Fest because the time's getting near. Boy, we're, we're, we're less than a month away. Um, we have some exciting, exciting stuff going on. So I put this poll up, and, and right from day one, we had people buying the optional leaderboards, which – which made me feel very good because I designed this derby this year to be more inclusive um, as opposed to exclusive. The idea is fishermen in my mind, especially at this level or what we're trying to do with a derby or a tournament, or you want to bring people in, not, not do this, you know, and and I am all about the inclusion, the positivity, the the the, and also about doing things a little differently. You know, um, nothing is ever any one thing all the time, and it doesn't have to. You know, nothing has to stay one way. Um, you try things. If something works, then you keep doing it. If if something doesn't work, then you then you make adjustments along the way. That's it's that way in any business. Um, so, so this is 70%, seven, you know, seven out of 10 people <clears throat> are, are saying they're going to participate in the walleye fest optional boards. And there's a lot of great boards and, and different ways to, to kind of split the same, um, not split, but because I've had a bunch of people ask me each 
individual leaderboard is its own pool, okay? And so if you get into the, the best five pool, all the money from the best five pool that goes back out, you know, I mean, it's, it's, how do I say that? Each one of them is individual. It's not everything gets lumped together and then you, then you pay out. If, if you have a ton of people in one board, then you're going to have a ton of money in payouts. If you don't have very many, then you're not going to have very many. You know, the main board is different because everybody gets into the main leaderboard first. Um, it's it's our most expensive one at twenty five dollars, and it's the most payback, and it's big, and it's it's the whole nine. The optional ones are fun, and they're and they're and they're dipping our toe into the different things to see what people like and what they gravitate towards. The next time we do it may not be all the same ones. We're we're not locked in. I'm not locked into anything. Or if somebody says to me after the fact, like like this year's kayak leaderboard is a direct result of last year having so many people say, man, I wish you had a kayak division. You know, um, I wish there was, I wish I was fishing against other kayak fishermen. I understand. So we did it. Now, if you have 10 guys sign up for it this year, it's maybe it's not worth it. If you have a hundred guys sign up for it or girls, then then it is. Then there's a then there's something there that people want. So a good business listens and delivers to his customers what they want. So Bill Morey, what's going on? Had a great day on Lake Ontario today. Got some nice browns and some tank smallmouth mixed in. And the sun broke out just in time to see the eclipse. Bill Morey, where were you today? Um, where were you fishing? General area, you know, give me and everybody your exact spot. Uh. Aaron said, I was never able to see the five walleye limit. Only could see, meaning the optional leaderboard for the five fish limit. Only could see the perch in panfish. Not sure if it was because I did it via my phone. I don't think so, Eric, or uh, Aaron. My guess is when you answered the question, and there's a question that said, uh, do you have a bump board? If you answered no to that, then the best five and the most keeper leaderboards wouldn't show up for you because you said you didn't have a bump board. Now, every single angler is not required to have a bump board, but if you're fishing on a boat, let's say, with your buddies, um, there has to be a bump board available because those two boards are the CPR format only, which is catch, photograph, release. Again, the, the release part is up to you, but for the derby, um, we're catch and release, and we've talked about that, but it has to be on a bump board. So if you answer no to do you have a bump board, then those two boards specifically will not show up in your queue to give you a chance to buy them because you answered no to that question. Just like if, when you answer um, male or female, if you answer male, then you can't, then the women's board doesn't even populate for to, is an option for you to buy because you're not a woman, you're a man. Um, or, same thing with all those other specialty boards, charter customer only. So if you're fishing, if you're only fishing on a charter during Walleye Fest and, and you and you choose that option, then it populates our software system, populates that you can that you're eligible to get into that um, to that board. So that's why those questions are important. Now, when we talk about bump boards, um, I have I have right now three options for bump boards that are going to be on the board. And let me say something too. When you go, you've bought your ticket, you you logged into the website, and now you have your own personal. So so Aaron Lussier, and I always say your last name wrong, so I'm just going to say Aaron. 
So Aaron now is logged into the Walleye Fest website and he can go back using his username that you use to get in. And you can go back and just put your username in and it shows your, um, your dashboard, okay? Um, at any time, you can go back and especially a bump board, okay? So we have three options for bump boards. I'm waiting for Nick Sokolowski at Soko uh, Outdoors. Everybody knows Nick. Um, he's, a, he's a captain up here on, on uh, well, up here, not just on the night of lake. He does charters. He has Soko baits, and he also sells his own bump board. So that I'll have a link for that in your dashboard. Um, I just made a deal with the owner of Catch Boards, K-E-T-C-H. Catch is the standard of the kayak fishing industry, which has been this virtual CPR format for years now. Um, Catch makes amazing boards. They're polycarbonate. They're lightweight. They're made 100% in the United States. Um, he has, as their sponsorship for Walleye Fest, you'll have a 10% discount and free shipping on any of those bump boards that you buy directly from catch that link will be there. And I also have a link in, there'll be a link for fish USA, who is one of our sponsors as well. I'm proud to have fish USA on board. They're an outstanding company. I'm in their affiliate program. So I have links that you can use in all my videos to go in and buy something at a, um, through, my affiliate link, I'll have an affiliate link for a Rapala bump board as well. So there'll be three choices. The Rapala is a little bit a little bit less expensive. Um, then the Nick's uh, Sokolowski, the Soko Outdoors bump board is aluminum. Um, it's a nice piece of equipment. And I'm proud to have Nick on board as a sponsor in Soko Baits. And then we'll have the one from Catch. So at any time, you can go back in. Um, and buy a bump board. And when you buy that bump board and click on it, then it reopens those two leaderboards to you. And you can you can get those, those two CPR only boards. And if you have your own bump board, you don't have to rush off and go to a measuring station. You can do it from your boat on the water and you don't have to stop fishing. So you can, anybody... Anybody with a bump board can enter, even just if you're only in the main leaderboard. If you have your own bump board, you can use the virtual portal, which we'll get into when we get closer to the derby. Um, you can enter your fish that way virtually. You don't have to go to a measuring station. We have four measuring stations around the lake. They'll be at Oneida Shores, South Shore Boat Ramp, Godfrey Point Boat Ramp, and the wall at Sylvan Beach, right there by uh, by the bridge. Okay, so you can go to them, and those are all going to be right on the water to allow for quicker in and out, um, and to also protect our fish, which is why we went to a, a a catch and release derby this year format. And I'll say it a thousand times: once you've entered your fish. It's up to you, the angler, as to what you do with it. If you want to release it, if you want to keep it towards your limit, that's up to you and, and how you abide by the laws of New York State and the limits. For the derby, we don't need you to kill that fish. Excuse me. I drank some, I was watching Willy Wonka earlier and I drank some fuzzy lifting juice and it went right to my right to my nose. Um so you don't have to you don't have to rush off and and hey, I got a big one I got to go in quick and get it measured. You can do it right from your boat if you have your own bump board. And a bump board is a measuring device with a ninety degree angle at one end that you bump the fish's nose into. So here's the bump board like this, and you bump that fish's nose into it. That's why it's called a bump board, as opposed to just a ruler or a measuring tape or something like that, because that's not the same because you can't show in the picture when you format your picture that that fish is right perfectly to the end, starting at zero. So that's why it's called a bump board. It has to have a 90 degree angle on one end. So 
Just, just for the record. Bill Morey said, he goes, I put in at Salmon Country Marina and headed north. Didn't find good colored water until we were close to the Salmon River. Oh, you went a long way. Okay. Um, makes sense that the, that, that corner, that, that, that south eastern corner would be good after that big west wind we had and it blew all that warm surface water and colored water into the corner. So that's awesome, Bill. Good for you. Scott Hildebrand, will the panfish be done by length? Yes. It's sunfish, crappy, or bluegill. Everything is by length in our derby because length is the most honest way to do it, in my opinion. I'm not disparaging other things that do by weight and girth and all that, and we used to do that, but, but weight and girth can be manipulated easiest if you are so inclined to cheat, and length is what it is. Um, and any kind of picture, you know, cause you, when you submit that picture, when, when you take it to the, to a measuring station, anything that, that, that you can visually see that's been done to that fish will disqualify it and you immediately. Um, there is no, there is no gray area for cheaters in this. And if you're caught cheating, you will be publicly called out. You will be prosecuted to the fullest extent that's available to us. Um, and you'll be banned for life from any further um, derby activity that's associated with me. Um, anything that I run, I can tell you that right now. Um, this is fun first. There's money involved, so people have a propensity to try and cheat the system. I I'm telling you right now, any and all will be investigated and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But everything is by length. Everything is by length because that is the least cheatable metric that we can use. So, and when it comes down to it, if you're somebody that's always fished derbies or tournaments by weight, all you're doing is putting a different number in there. So it's still, everyone's on the same page. Everyone's on the same level playing field. And the measurement is what you're, what you're, what you're, you know, is what it is. The measurement is what it is. And that's the hardest one to manipulate. So yes, yeah, Scott, everything is done by length. Are you going to ask about culling and or party fishing in the polygraph? Um, that's a question by Mike Urema. We have an extensive list of questions for the polygraphs. Um, and I'm, I, I won't get into them specifically, um, but culling is done automatically in the computer system. So if I, if I catch a fish, you know, in the wee hours of Saturday morning, that's 22 inches and I catch one later on that day, that's 23 inches, I enter that. If I'm only in a single walleye division board, the main leaderboard and the first, you know, the first seven leaderboards, which are only based on one walleye, like you don't, I've everybody's entered into the main leaderboard. If I then entered into, so for me, I entered into the military veteran leaderboard, okay? It's the same fish. I don't enter a different one for this leaderboard. I enter it under my name and then that one fish of mine in our software system then goes and sees, does it fit in the leaderboards? Does it fit in the placement of, of any of the ones that I'm entered into? Okay. Um, Mike says, not if someone has already kept their five, then tried to upgrade. Upgrade. So the best five board is your best five during the 36 hours. It's not a it's not a one-time thing. So if you're in the best five board, um you would keep entering, you would you would do if your best five were were all over 20 inches and you caught a 19-incher, 
you wouldn't enter it, it you wouldn't weigh it in because or measure it because it wouldn't matter it wouldn't it wouldn't go into that if if all of your five fish were were 20 to 22 inches and you caught a 23 then you would measure that enter it and that would go into your best five and your lowest one would fall off so your dashboard is only if, if you're in the best five one is is constantly upgrading because you're culling it's not a one-time deal because it's a it's i mean it is one time but it's 36 hours long it's the whole derby like once you once you get your five you can keep upgrading that's the point of it um because it's oh as long as you keep releasing fish again because we're a catch and release derby the angler is required to follow the the state laws and the limits so if you just keep keeping fish and you keep all of those fish that you're catching just like if you enter the the most keepers um obviously your limit is is five fish per day so in that 24 hour span so you start at at midnight uh, or 1201 Saturday morning you know you can you can you can only keep five fish in 24 hours if you release them you can keep catching as many as you want and again, for your best five limit for us, for the Derby, it's it's not about the anglers responsible to follow the law. So if you keep releasing them, then you could keep entering them and catching them all you want. You know, again, what you do with um, like I'm trying to follow you here. As long as you keep releasing fish. Yes, that was what I wanted to hear you say. Okay, now wrap that back to party fishing and culling. <clears throat> well, party fishing, if I if I understand what you're saying is, um, you know, one guy would, would be entered into, entered into that. And so let's say one person on the boat, there's, multiple people on the boat let's say only one person is in the derby and only one person has has bought into like let's say the best five board and one person and his other buddies are all putting their fish into that one board that will get taken that will get shaken out or shook out um in the lie detector first and foremost because everybody that wins a cash prize is subject to a lie detector test. Aaron, there are no sub team subdivisions, not this year. Um, no, there are no teams. So it's all individual. And there again, if you're going to party fish and we find out about it, then that's cheating, period. There's no gray area. You will be immediately disqualified and and banned for life from all future derbies, period. And when we find out who your cohorts are, they're all going to be in the same boat. Um, you can't stop cheating in anything you do. Um, and, and I'm not a big let's threaten people, but that's what's going to happen if we find cheaters. That is what's going to happen. And, and, and I will not – I don't have any – problem um doing that i have no i have no love loss for cheaters i think the fishing industry has had a terrible black eye these last couple years with those guys out in lake erie with all the you know you've heard of some bass tournaments that have had this um the guy with that with that state record crappy um i have nothing in my heart that that will protect the cheater whatsoever in this um so Don't do it. Period. Oh, Aaron was answering his question. But but that's true. And and there will be, let me tell you, this is something else. Walleye Fest 
once this year, once the once our main weekend derby is done, and now that we'll have the technology to do the virtual uh, derbies, we will be year round. Okay, um, except for when for walleye specifically, except for when walleye is closed from March fifteenth to May first. So, but we will be year round. If we have ice again this winter, walleye fest on ice will still be going on, you know, and, and we may, we may do a weekend, a big weekend derby come ice season if we have safe ice. But even if we don't, every month there will be a selection of leaderboards that you would like to get into. Um, that's in the future. And I don't want to talk about that too much, but walleye fest will be year round and, and there will be in the, in the coming months, we'll have teams, um, We'll have the ability to do angler co-angler. We may start doing something to where, you know, we would have a pro division, depending on how things go. Like there's a lot of great things down the road. Um, so there's more to come. So Aaron's brought up a good point. What if someone has a leaderboard fish but is unable to be there for the ceremony? Uh, we're working with our legal team right now to see if legally we can mandate that you have to be at the award ceremony if you've placed. Tentatively, I'm going to say right now that if you place in the money, um, we're going to pay you virtually. All payouts will be paid through Stripe. Just It's the same um, app that we use to take the payments in our website. Stripe is is the most secure. It's the best site out there. It's it's what all vendors are using nowadays. Um, and we have the ability to pay virtually. Um, no payments will be made until everything is verified. And if I have the legal power to say, if you place, you must be at the award ceremony in order to receive your, your deal, especially if you win, um, there'll be more to come on that, but that's where I'm headed. That's what I would like for a number of reasons, because it's part of community. It's part of showing people and showing up and putting faces to names and Hey, so-and-so won and, and, Oh, I know that guy I've seen him before, you know, whatever. So that's part of it. Um, The rules on the website are last year's rules with updated dates. Uh, Legal has our new updated. They're still working out the kinks on it, but it, the, the rules, the updated full rules will be posted prior to the Derby starting. I guarantee you that. And everybody will, um, will see them and they will be clearly posted. Um, we still have a few things we're working out with our legal team to make sure that we're covered, that we're covered and that you're covered because I don't want to enter into something that, that I don't believe in or trust. And we're doing everything possible to make sure that we have all of our bases covered. Uh, the bump board links are not up yet. Aaron, I can't let you know. Like I say, I can't let you know about your friend yet. I mean, if if I understand people have commitments, but this is a commitment too, you know, and it's a, it's a commitment we're making to fish it. And if you if if you win, then you have to make the commitment to, or I don't mean just win. If you place, then you have to make the commitment that we're all above board and that you would be uh, ready, willing, and available to take a lie detector test. And that's that's. I don't see how that's going to change. So <laughs> I already warned him. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the case. I, I, I don't want anybody to miss a family function, but on the same hand, um, we're going to, we're going to be giving away tens and tens of thousands of dollars. It has to be above board. And, and my goal in life is to make sure that everyone has a fair shake. 
which is why I've done some of these things that I've done and why I have why I've made this derby bigger and better because I want more people to taste that winning. I want I want more kids to be involved so that our next generation of fishermen come up and they have that real excitement about it, you know. I love having something to that people mark their calendars by um, and that, that the tradition continues and it, and it gets better and bigger. Um, you know, I would love walleye fest to turn into the Bassmaster classic, you know, and, and if anyone's ever been to the, to the classic or, or ever seen the way they do their sports show and stuff, you have all the biggest and best um, fishing related companies. there showing their wares, really embracing the fishing community. That's what I want for, for us, for our lake, for our participants. Um, so that's where we're headed. So this is one of those things that, that if you're going to do it, if we're going to do it, we're all going to do it together and we're all going to do it full force and we're all going to do it on the up and up. So we're at 55 minutes, everybody. I think we had a great evening tonight. Um, we got time for a few more quick questions. If anybody has any, um, we're still running right now. We're 65, 35 on, on people, um, entering the optional leaderboards. Let me say this. You don't have to enter anything other than the main. If that's all you want to do, then I'm a thousand percent for that. I love you for it. I welcome you. And it's no different than last year. The main leaderboard is, is a big deal. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the continuation of the Lions Club Derby. It, it is wonderful and I love it. Um, there is no pressure whatsoever. That's why I have made sure to say that it is optional. And not everybody is into more. Not everybody is into all of the other things. I get that. And I don't have any problem with it. And I love you guys. And that is the biggest, the biggest thing I can say is there is no pressure whatsoever. I only ask these questions and put these things out there because I want to deliver the best possible product to our angling community and to support the amazing resource that we have on Oneida Lake and beyond. Maybe someday we'll be in other lakes. Maybe someday we'll we'll do a series. You know, I, dreams are just that. Um, decision made on the payout, top 10 or 25. If you go to the website and you see everything was put back to the main leaderboard is 25 guaranteed places the way it always was. Um, we put the poll out there. I had no problem listening to my customers whatsoever. Um, and it was, it was about 70, 30, uh, it was about 60, 40 um, to go back to 25 for the main leaderboard. So I support that fully and I made that change. Um, thank you for asking. And I was going to bring that up and I had forgotten. So, all right, 58 minutes and counting. Anybody else? Questions? Newman? Bueller, Bueller. Excuse me. It's been a long day. I was up at three thirty. I launched the boat in the Salmon River at five thirty this morning. It was cold too. It was frosty. I'm gonna sleep good tonight. All right. Looks like everybody's done with questions. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. I hope everybody enjoyed the eclipse. And I will see you guys soon. I will talk to you tomorrow morning. Keep your tip up. Get your walleye tickets. Talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bump boards used, real quick, Chris Bryan, bump boards used have to be one of the three that are offered, correct? No. Um, I'm not going to put that distinction on, you know, everybody that watches my videos, they see I've got an old, I've got the old bump board from the Lions Club um, that I use. Now I'll probably upgrade mine and I would love to see everybody upgrade to SoCo or to catch um, 
but I'm not going to mandate that this year. Um, we will, we will, and we do reserve the right to check any and all uh, bump boards that are used because we have we have picture evidence of everything. So if you submit a, a fish in your picture and it's it's on your bump board and you place and you come to the to the derby, we have every right to ask to have you produce that bump board to make sure we can check it. Um, again, I would like to see everybody use Soco and and catch. Um, they're sponsors of ours and and they're supporting us, so we should support them. Um, but this year, because it's new and the timing of it, um, nothing homemade. No, nothing homemade. Like that walleye, that 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 old Lions Club Derby board that I have would not be okay because it's a it's a yardstick that's been embedded in wood. No, it's got to be something that's that's production made um, this year. In the coming years. I would like to, you know, we'll see about transitioning everybody to one of those two styles alone. Um, but this year with logistics, we just we just don't have the time to do that. So great question, though, Chris. Thank you. All right, everybody. 101. Keep your tip up. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.